What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues and no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update for Saturday, December 30th. 2023 that's right tomorrow's new year's eve and on today's edition of the pandemic update we are going to take a look back on what has happened so far this year you know where we are with the pandemic and well what's currently happening right now and i'll tell you what a lot of things have happened in the past year people have tested positive there have been studies that have come out we'll take a look at that first off if you're new to the channel welcome to my channel this is where we do the daily pandemic update on COVID and any other virus or health threat out there to you. So if you like what you see here, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. All right, starting off today with what I think was probably one of the most notable events of 2023. Something that, you know, we're not happy about. Many people are not happy about. And that is where the public health emergency ended by the who and pretty much everywhere everyone just pretty much said hey the pandemic is over the global pel public health emergency is over now people didn't go out and say that covid was over although that's what they were implying covid is still a threat and we all know it and you see it in my gif that i post on almost every video where i put the pandemic is not over well they declared the health emergency over in many places the who did the United States did it it was just a really bad thing that happened in 2023 this happened back in May of this year and well since they've done that some things have happened and some things are still happening so let's continue on with this first you have to come to this COVID killed 2,000 kids in the U.S. this year 2,000 kids in the United States that's that's a lot that, in my opinion, that is still pandemic levels. And here's what's bad about that. So they declared the pandemic over. Let's read this. COVID killed 2,000 kids in the U.S. this year. That's 20% more than all other kids' deaths combined. We don't have to live like this, but look at this chart. Look at this chart here. Here's the uh, deaths here. Now, this is not all COVID. This is just kids all together in general that are dying of various different things. And look at that. The levels are actually going up not down up so yeah that's still a pandemic then let's come over to my website look what have we learned this year who tested positive okay first off there were a lot of studies here that have been posted on my website i posted some some other people have posted some we learned about COVID's effects on the brain i think what we learned most about was the long-term effects of COVID. Long COVID. Now, we're not going to click on any of these, but we're just going to read here. Study shows long COVID worse for patients than long flu. We learned about that this year. Then we come here. New study expands knowledge on post-COVID-19 conditions. That's not good. Long COVID impact on brain function equivalent to aging 10 years. We learned about that this year. That was back in July. Risk of long COVID in the United Kingdom and Hong Kong. Yeah, it's not good. It's a risk of long COVID all around the world. Around 40% of long COVID patients now have sleep issues, a study shows. So we learned about long COVID here. I could go on and on. What else occurred in this year? Well, we learned about COVID's effect on the brain. And look at this. That section's starting to fill up here. Uh, there's a lot of things that are showing up. Brain MRI study shows significant abnormalities up to six months after COVID. So you can have brain problems that don't even start until up to six months after COVID. Study finds distress before COVID-19 infection increases risk of long COVID by 45%. Yeah, we learned a lot of bad things that this virus can do. But hey, going back to where we started off today, remember the public health emergency was over. Um, COVID can cause all these things. That sounds like a public health emergency to me. All right, continuing on here. Who tested positive this year? Now, we're not going to go through all of them, but there were some notable positives. And unfortunately, we did lose David Crosby this year, 
who had COVID, then went on to long COVID and a whole bunch of health issues. And yes, he we did lose David Crosby back on January 18th. He passed away at 81 years old. You know, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And yes, his COVID case, again, it did turn into long COVID. Then you may recall, if we go back, into I believe it was in the summer months. Bruce Springsteen. He's had a bad. He's had a bad year. 2023 was not a good year for Bruce Springsteen. He's had health issues. He's had peptic ulcers, and yes, he had COVID at least once. We don't know how many other times he's had COVID. There's reports saying he's had it se several times, and he's currently 73 years old. This case was back around April 15th. Then there were other people who's had COVID many times. Harry Styles has had COVID several times. He's had several issues with uh, shows. He's had to cancel his shows, so that's not good. Then we go back. There were other people, political figures. There were a ton of political figures, the most recent being Bernie Sanders, uh, Senator Tom Tills. On it, on it goes. A lot of senators and representatives tested positive this year. And I do believe it is here somewhere. Jill Biden, if you remember correctly, did have COVID this year as well. I believe it was like the end of the summer going into uh, the start of fall where Jill Biden had COVID. I mean, on and on it goes. There were a ton of uh, political figure positives, but not as many as previous years. Let me explain why. This was the year where people... A lot of the famous people stopped reporting their cases of COVID and started putting illness, illness, illness. Whether it was contract reasons, legal reasons, whatever the case may be, they were hiding their cases and they were switching it over to illness instead of saying COVID. And here's the First Lady Jill Biden. She tested positive for COVID back on September 4th of this year. And there were several other people who tested positive as well. There were actors and actresses. On and on it goes. How about COVID variants this year? We had a lot of different variants that occurred this year. You may recall that we started the year 2023 off with the XBB 1.5 variant, the BQ.1. There was also the BA.5. Who remembers that? There was BA.5, and then BA.2 was still around in small levels beginning this year, and, well, that BA.2 being around in small levels in the United States and in other parts of the world then led to BA.2.86, and fast forward to now, we are on that JN.1 variant, which you'll see that when we get to the CDC page. And there was also HV.1 back in the summer, EG.5, remember that variant? And at one point, we really got into the point where the list of variants, there were like 20 to 30 different variants. But now JN.1, that's becoming dominant around the country, is really starting to kick butt with these other variants, and it's really dominating, and hopefully it does not lead to anything else in 2024, but as you know, there will likely be new variants in 2024. How about the year in deaths? Well, there were a lot of deaths in 2023. 2023 started off the year very bad. One of the first weeks of the year had over 3,800 deaths. And then you can see they gradually dropped. Spring, actually, the deaths did occur. Spring was actually quiet for COVID. We did not have a huge spring wave like we had in other years. Instead, what we had was a wave that started after 4th of July, and that COVID wave persisted right on into the fall months. It dropped ever so slightly right before the late fall Thanksgiving wave started up, and now we are in the JN.1 wave. We were in a variant soup wave prior to that, but JN.1 is the cause of deaths right now. And when we come back to take a look at BNO, in the most recent week, 1,785 deaths. We'll probably start off 2024 somewhere close to 2,000 and eventually going over 2,000 deaths in a week. And remember, right now, any data right now is less accurate than data where we started 2023. At the start of 2023, more hospitals were required to report their COVID cases. Once the public health emergency ended in the United States back in May, that was no longer the case. So data right now, it is sparse. If we go back to here and look at various different things, like such as hospitalizations, in which we can see here, 
you can see accumulated hospitalizations since the pandemic. Look at this. I mean, since the pandemic started, and mind you, this is likely a way off number because hospitals are not reporting COVID hospitalizations. 6.6 .6 million people in the United States have been hospitalized with COVID from the uh, start of the pandemic. And we go back to the beginning of January, that was at 5.7 million. So another 900,000 have been in the hospital for COVID this year. And we know that number's wrong. It's likely over a million, maybe 1.3, 1.4 million. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. And But you would have to think, hey, that's far more than flu does in one year. Does that not sound like an emergency level to you? It does to me. All right, moving on with Walgreens over the past year. Well, Walgreens over the past year was a roller coaster. Walgreens positivity rates were, while they were high to start the year, they dropped, they went up slightly, just a little bit in the spring. Then they really went up in the summertime and believe it or not right now they're dropping because testing is high i think after the holidays we're going to see testing drop off that could result in positivity starting the year going upward in 2024 Alrighty, taking a look at this something that has happened in italy in 2023 what's that they hit a new all-time record for influenza cases i don't know when they started tracking influenza cases, how far back data goes. Here, it goes back to 2018-19. I don't know how far back their record books go, but right now, look at the influenza flu cases in Italy. They are just rapidly going up this dark green line right here. It is not good. All right, let's take a look at something a little bit more recent. How about today? Here's the current air quality values across the United States. Here's what they look like. So on the last Saturday of 2023, mm, not so good in the West, not good in the Great Lakes. It's fireplace season. That adds a lot of smoke in the air and can impact air quality. We will be ending the year with some bad wastewater data. We will have our wastewater update again tomorrow, which we do almost every week some weeks we don't do it some weeks we just mix it in with a pandemic update and i will admit if there's a lot of news that pops up between now and tomorrow i'm going to add some news in as well covid19 currently ending 2023 it's growing in places look at this purple look at this uh, magenta color you can see here it's not good and then we come over here to the current variants, where we are ending 2023 in the united states at jn.1 is at 44. 2%. HV.1 is at 22.1%. And then coming on continuing, hospital admissions in the past week. We're ending the year with a lot of admissions. 29,059. That's up 16.7% because of JN.1. They're ending the year up because, after all, it is the winter holiday surge. Taking a look at daily EMS totals in Philadelphia for Friday, the last Friday of the year, it was at 792. Then we come over here to a live look at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. You can see, yes, there are a lot of EMS calls right now for respiratory emergencies. And when we come over to Chester County, you can see multiple calls for sick people at this time. And I have to show you, share with you this news story out of Western Pennsylvania. While we're talking about Pennsylvania, COVID-19 hospitalizations in Western Pennsylvania are up 17 percent and listen to this there are uh, 1300 hospitalizations in pennsylvania right now so that's not a good number new jersey is now up to 1193 36 people on a ventilator in the icu 118 discharges there were 176 67 out of 70 hospitals reporting new york state throughout the year let's take a look at this shall we new york state is actually having it some of its highest cases of the year to end the year uh, the beginning of the year, actually, I should correct myself here. The beginning of the year was pretty high, seven to 8,000 cases. But mind you, not as many people are getting tested right now. So in reality, if you went off of wastewater, it's probably higher than any point of the year right now for cases. And taking a look at New York State hospitalizations over the past year, you can see right now there are 2,774 people in the hospital in New York State, which, believe it or not, to start off 
2023, they were actually higher. They were at 4,350, but remember, not all hospitals are required to report, so we have to assume there could be a few hospitals that are not reporting the current hospitalizations, and this number continues to rise and will probably peak somewhere maybe around the second week of January. We'll see. If everything goes as it's supposed to by the COVID modeling experts who model based off of wastewater, they're saying the second week in January, maybe around January 10th. So we'll see. Hopefully it goes as expected because we don't want it to keep going up as fast as it's going now because that's just not good at all. Uh, Texas, Texas is ending the year with a week of 16,751 cases and 46 deaths. So, yeah, it's still it's still a public health emergency wherever we look at this. And finally, let's take a look at California. You can see California is ending the year on rising cases. But again, this is uh, very lag data. It goes back to December 22nd. They actually started the year with a positivity rate of around 12.4%, and they are ending the year with a positivity rate of around 9.6%, probably likely because this is lagged. It's probably over 10%. And what the heck, let's see where we are ending the year on flu, and let's just rewind. You can see here, back in October, there were some places where flu was starting to spread, but then as we went to November, the South started getting bad, and in December, uh, yeah, the South got really bad. And now look at all this purple here. You can see here, it's pretty bad, and it's starting to spread to the North. So as for flu in the United States, we're ending the year pretty bad. Mpox, haven't talked about that. MPOX were actually ending the year off better than we did last year because there were less cases this year, though there were still some sporadic detections of it in wastewater. Remember, there was that epidemic of uh, MPOX back in 2022 where there was actually like a summer wave that dropped. There were many uh, waves in 2023. There was no big national wave that happened all at once. There were just random detections here and there that we found in wastewater already. So basically, in 2023, what has happened? Well, in 2023, we're still in a pandemic. COVID is still a thing. Maybe the health officials do not want to call it a pandemic, but people are still dying. Long COVID, it's not good. We've learned more about long COVID in 2023. We've learned that, hey, COVID, it's its not good for your health. It can have long-term effects, and there are many more things that we do not know and that we will probably learn as we head into 2024. We're ending the year on a bad note. We're in the second worst wave per wastewater. We're in the second worst wave of the entire pandemic right now to end out 2023. So 2024, you may want it to be a better year. It's going to start off on a bad note, at least on the perspective of COVID and other viruses which are running rampant right now. And remember, we go back to Italy. Italy has record high number of influenza cases because COVID can weaken your immune system. We learned more about that in 2023. Alrighty, I will see you all again tomorrow for the last video of 2023, which will be a wastewater update, maybe a couple news items, and then comes 2024. So if you do not tune in tomorrow because it's New Year's Eve, I want to be the first to wish you a very happy New Year's. Here's to hopefully a happier, healthier 2024. Maybe we can make some progress and get some new treatments, and maybe things can get better at some point in 2024. I hope Based on where we're at right now, here's the flu levels, you saw COVID levels, it's going to be a rough start to 2024, and yep, that's all I have for today. If you learned anything here or you enjoyed this review, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel down below, leave a comment. What sticks out to you most in 2023? What what sticks out to you most? What was like a uh, moment during the year that was like, Oh, man, I wish they didn't do that. For me, it was when they ended the public health emergency. That was like, oh, I can't believe they're doing this. Because, guess what? COVID didn't end. And the more we find out, the more that we are learning that long-term impacts of COVID are not good. Alrighty, folks, I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Until I see you again next time, stay safe, everyone. And once again, Happy New Year's. Thanks for watching.